Casey Gray here from The Conscious Builder. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you've heard us discuss the pros and cons of solar panels, and you probably see them going up in your neighborhood. The question is, is your roof a good candidate for solar panels? That is what we are going to discuss here in this video. And we're gonna show what one of our homeowners did in order to design their roof for future solar panels. The goal for this home is to be a net zero positive and zero carbon home. The building has been completely framed and closed up for the winter and construction for the homeowner will resume in the summer. This house was designed to use both passive solar principles using solar radiation for heating and solar PV, which is solar energy generation from solar panels on the roof. For the passive solar element, most of the home's windows are on the south side to allow for solar radiation to enter into the house when the sun is lower in the sky in the winter and deep overhangs to block the sun during the warmer months in the summer. Note that this is not to be confused with a certified passive house. We have a video on the difference between the two if you're interested in diving deeper into that. The three biggest factors to consider when you're trying to figure out how much energy your solar panels are going to produce is orientation, roof slope, and the shading. Now in this video, we're not going to get into shading because there is no shading for this particular project, but we are going to discuss the orientation and the slope of the roof and why it was designed the way it was. This house was planned with the long side oriented facing south. This is the most important factor to ensure that the roof has exposure to the sun throughout the whole day. The roof pitch was planned to account for the optimal solar gain for our latitude and climate. Now latitude is the distance north or south of the equator. So at the equator, ideal roof is flat and at the north and south pole, they would be 90 degrees. Now, if you're going to be installing your panels flat on your roof, a general rule of thumb is that the pitch should be as close to the latitude as possible. This house is located at 44 degrees north, but the area experiences sunnier days in the summer. So the homeowners planned for the roof pitch to be better aligned closest to the right angle of the angle for the summer sun. They decided on a 912 pitch, which translates to about 37 degrees. Roof pitch design for solar PV isn't an exact science, and there is usually a bit of compromise for better gain versus many other things like aesthetics, practicality, cost, and access. In an ideal situation, your panels would follow the sun as it goes through the sky and changes angles throughout the day and throughout the year. However, this usually is not practical, especially if you're installing the panels on your roof. What you can do instead is put that money you would spend on trying to do this and instead buy more panels to offset the loss that you might experience in just setting it to one angle. The south facing roof on this home is large enough to accommodate a system size of 10 kilowatts or approximately 30 panels. Their second floor deck allows for easy access to the larger roof surface and they intend to size the solar PV system to generate all of the electricity they will use, which has been estimated to be about 20 kilowatt hours per day or approximately 7,000 kilowatt hours per year. The homeowners don't plan on installing their PV system until at least one year after they've lived in the home because you want to make sure that you size it properly. Yes, you can put solar panels on and you can base it just on models. However, it may not be accurate for how you live in the home. So this is always a wise decision. Use real life data as opposed to theories. The other thing that's important to understand is that this house is a net zero energy home, which means it is tied into the grid. It's using the electricity from the grid, but it's offsetting its electricity usage from the solar panels. I won't get into how all of that works. However, you just need to understand that that's different from an off-grid home. An off-grid home is something that would have to be modeled for the worst 
time of year, not the average over the entire year. In our climate, that would be the dead of winter when you don't have as much daylight, when the, the snow might be covering the panels, you're running the heat a lot more. It's a very different model and a very different approach to modeling your home, sizing your panels, and you would then have to include batteries. Now where models come into play in this case is making sure that your roof is designed to accommodate the panels that you're assuming you're going to have to install. In this case, they believe that they're going to need about six kilowatts, which is going to take up about 350 to 400 square feet. And they've sized the larger portion of the roof to accommodate this. If they go through that year and they realize that they actually use more electricity than they've modeled, then they do have the smaller part of the roof, which would get them up to a total size of 10 kilowatts. Lastly, the homeowners decided to go with a steel roof because they didn't want the panels to outlast the roofing. This also helped them on the carbon footprint side because steel is better than asphalt shingles. Now, if you already have a home and the roof is built and there's asphalt shingles on it and the orientation isn't perfect, just make sure you're working with professionals who know what they're do doing and an energy advisor who knows how to model your home properly. And maybe even a contractor if you're planning on doing some work that's going to change the amount of electricity that you use in your home. Bring in that integrated design process that we talk about so often on this channel. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. If you're wondering how you can support the channel, one of the best ways you can do that is by dropping a like under this video. We also love to get your comments and questions, so you can put those below the video and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Until next time, I'm Casey Gray, and remember to build consciously.